here I was given a thesis this this uh, revolution thing revolution is not is totally my gig but not my gig it's not what I generally speak about but I have notes I made notes so I may refer to them so if it looks like I'm searching and it looks like I'm reading it's because I'm searching and I'm reading <laughs> so be cool with that um, how many people here just a raise of hands uh, are here and doing what you're doing for a living because you were just creative kids. Because you made shit when you were a kid, right? Right? We're all wildly creative as kids. I was wildly creative as a kid. My mom, she would come home from work and she would hear me upstairs and she said, she used to, she used to think there were three kids playing in my room. Because I had G.I. Joe's and I was doing all the voices and I had all the, and, and drawing on everything and wordplay making up lyrics to songs, right? And drawing on everything, including walls and my clothes and books. Um, I've drawn on myself here, but not as much as Brandon and some of you other guys were like, that's, that's some tough shit you got going there. But, um, <laughs> but what happened was I found out that in school and even in my own family, my creativity was not condoned. It was not shepherded. It was not taught. Right? I was, I was called creative. You know what that means? That means we don't know what to do with him. <laughs> I was called weird. Right? I mean, I think this is a common story. There's the, what happens is, is to be a creative individual takes work. It takes an effort to maintain it. Because school teaches it out of you. Because they want you to get in line, to learn the rules, so we can get uniform students, you know? As Bob Dylan says, 20 years of school and then they put you on the day shift, right? Factory workers. You know, but, and, and I understand this because I've been a teacher. I've taught at the School of Visual Arts for 15, 18 years, and I don't even like creative students. <laughs> you know why? They disrupt. That's our fucking job. They disrupt. That's what creativity does. And I think it's a common story. I think there's people here who, can, who could write a book about the times that they have tried to own that creativity, to put it in their work, to be that person where they get chided or they get, it gets embarrassed out of you, right? It's just not accepted. Why can't you be normal? How many times I've heard that? Why can't you be normal, right? And as you get older, as we become adults, the pressure to be normal, to conform, to fit into that, that square body, to fit into that square cubicle, mounts. Anybody here get married? Anybody here get, get been married? Okay, and then you ask one of your buddies, you're like, hey dude, I'm getting married. And like, would you like, you know, like, like, would you give a talk? Like, could you like have a, and, the, and, and the, the buddy inevitably goes to Corinthians, right? And reads that fucking, oh God. <laughs> Right? You guys know what I'm talking about. Corinthians, it says, when I was a child, I acted like a child. When I was a child, I played blah, blah, blah. But now we get rid of our, we put away our childish things. Fuck that! No! I'm going to meet that Corinthian someday and I'm going to punch him in the head. No. No. You know, soon there's a path that's laid out for us. We see, it on, we see it in magazines, we see it in TV, we see it in, in the mall. And happiness, happiness is set out for us. And happiness is, is getting married, 
getting a dog and having a house and seeking comfort and security. And soon you find yourselves doing what Tyler Durden calls suffering through jobs we hate to buy shit we don't need. Right? You become zombies. You become the working dead. You've seen these people. Go to, go to Walmart 10 o'clock at night. Right? Oh, fuck. Uh, be like us. You know? You know, I should have, if I was the working dead, I should have, at 53, I should have a beer gut and a minivan and a little white flag saying, I give up. I've stopped fighting. So the theme for this is revolution. And I like that idea. And what I believe is a revolution that you guys already have inside of you. The revolution is you. The revolution isn't something you're going to join. The revolution isn't something you're waiting for an invitation for. The revolution is you. Um, I think I'm on page two now. <laughs> you know, what happens to us is, is, is our creativity gets, gets wrapped on the knuckles so many times that the one tool that makes us unique and makes us, quite frankly, powerful is the one we start to disown. We let other people be in charge of our creativity. Other people tell us that we can't be weird. Um, I was giving a talk a couple years ago, and there was a Q and A at the at the end, and I was on partic particularly on fire, and I was talking about you know people owning, owning up to their creativity. And this, there was a question and answer period in the back, and then some kid raised his hand and said, oh, I, I have a question. He, said, he says, you know, Mr. Victoria, I hear what you're saying. He says, but I've got rent to pay. And I said, interesting story, what's your name? And he said, uh, Thomas. And I said, Thomas, here's your tombstone. Here lies Thomas. He would have done great work, but he had rent to pay. We let our circumstances depict. You need a revolution. Thomas needs a revolution. He was, a not, he was probably 30 and he'd already given up. Already been beaten down. Letting his circumstances depict. Here lies, here, here's, your, here's another tombstone. Here lies Thomas. He would have done great work, but his boss wouldn't let him. Right? You guys know that one? The hell with that. The one thing that makes us strong, the one thing that makes us unique, and we give up that power to somebody else. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, damn, geez, James, that, that sounds really hard. It's a fucking revolution. It's going to be hard. It's going to involve sacrifice. It's going to be hard work. That's just the way it is. But it's all, the revolutions are also sexy and fun. The, 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 um, in the 50s, the anarchist Emma Goldman said, if I can't dance to it, it's not my revolution. We were talking last night at dinner, um, and I was thinking about this later. Uh, uh, I was talking to, 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 to Gwen. I was thinking... How sexy would that be? Hey, what are, you, what are you up to, Gwen? She's like, oh, I'm in a revolution. I have my own revolution going. And you know what people do then? Can I join? Can I be involved? How can I help? Having a revolution is sexy and attractive. Other people want to be involved in it. Um, as a teacher, I often have a situation in my classroom 
or in the workshop that I'm doing or whether it's a dinner series or whatever, um, I, there's, inevitably there's a situation where someone's putting work up on the wall. Uh, well, a lot of people, have maybe there put a lot of people putting work up on the wall. And at one point, I have to pull one student aside. Generally more than one, but I have to pull one aside and say, you know what? I see how people respond to you. I see that, um, that you're smart and funny and charming. Now look at your work. It sucks. <laughs> because it's not funny or smart or charming. Put it in the work. Put it in the work. It's called, in the particular lies the universal. Which means that the more authentic I can be, even here, even here on stage, the more authentic, the more human, the more vulnerable and truthful and honest I can be here, the greater impact it's going to have on you guys. And what I do in my work is I try to be as honest and as vulnerable because I understand in the particular lies the universal. That means the things that I fear and the things that I love, the things that give me a hard on and the things that blow your skirt up, do the same for you. Mean, meaning the revolution of being yourself I am the revolution. I, I, we should have a, there should be a flag, or better yet, it should be a, 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 a tattoo. The revolution is me. So we can constantly look at it and go, ah, that's a mission statement right there. The revolution is me. Because I understand the things that drive me as a human being drive other people as a human being. So I have freed myself from making shit up. As a designer, I don't have to make shit up. You know, my job is not sitting around color correcting or picking typefaces. <sighs> right? And what happens when you understand in the particular lies of the universal and you start putting it in your work, what happens is your work becomes a gift. Meaning, as was said earlier, you don't work to make other people happy. You no longer work to make other people happy. You know that other people will rise to your challenge. Other people will, will, will accept what you make because you've made yourself happy first. Because in the particular lines of the universal, it's freaking true. One of my favorite poets, uh, Rumi, there's a chunk in a Rumi poem that he says, in the particular glows the universal. He like totally just like went to 11. <laughs> and what happens is your work becomes a gift, meaning, meaning, you don't work to make other people happy. You don't work for a paycheck. You don't work for the reward. Making other people happy and the reward comes on its own. And you have to trust that. You have to trust that what you have inside you, what you have to say is of value and people want it. And we can't let our circumstances or other people take it away from us. You know, you guys, you guys, have go, you guys go to the movies. You've been to the movies. You're like watching a movie and you're like, oh my God, that girl, that girl who like from Australia and she just wanted to like walk across Australia with a camel. It was like a stupid fucking idea, but, but don't, don't ask me. But it's like, have you seen that or read the book? We watch this and we're like, at the end, we're like, oh my God, she's at the ocean. She made it so great. <laughs> we love heroes. Do you know why we love heroes? We recognize them. They are us. They're what we're capable of. 
Yes, you can walk across the desert with a camel. Yes, you could have your own studio. Yes, you could possibly say, you know, um, these little gifts I have, that little funny sense of humor, you know, maybe I could put that in my work, right? So there's this gospel song, this American gospel song, you guys, I, I'm assuming you know it, um, This Little Light of Mine. You guys know, you know, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Right? You know that song. We don't! <laughs> we don't! And for two perfectly good, practical reasons. Because it's too easy and it's too hard. I was in, I was in, I was in uh, Brazil at a, t at a, at a talk and um, I spoke before this genius, um, this guy uh, Mariscal from, um, from Barcelona and the guy is like 70 years old, he did the logo for the Olympics, he had a, a grand, uh, 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 Oscar winning sh short animated film, he designs restaurants, the building, the art inside, the chairs, the menu, the guy's a genius. And he's supposed to go on, he's going out after me and I'm like, thank you, thank you very much, goodbye. And I walk out and he's in the corner, red face, sweating, throwing up. And I'm like, Marisco, are you okay? Was it the tacos? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he says to me, he says, James, I just do these little things. Totally self-doubt of his little gifts. So there's, we don't do it because it's too easy. It's just, we, we, we disown these gifts. We're like, oh, who, who wants that? My ability to match clothes and shoes, who does that? Nobody needs that, right? <laughs> so we don't do it. And we also do it because it's hard. Well, also, we don't do it because it's hard. Meaning, once you accept that level of creativity, once you accept that weirdness, those qualities that you have, you know what you gotta do now? You gotta present it out to the world. Out to the world, out to the public, out to the critics. And we live in fear that someone may not like it. We live in fear that someone may not like it. Crazy. And another little key, if you want, if, if, if the revolution is me, another key to that, and this is something that designers just, they're like, what did you just say? You are not for everyone. Just the sexy people. <laughs> you know, we often work for clients that make us go through all these revisions to, to make it as wide a spectrum as possible, as socially acceptable as possible. Ba basically making work that offends the fewest amount of people. Make ev let's make everybody happy doesn't work. It's impossible. Patently impossible. But if the revolution is you, what happens is you attract an audience. Your audience, not just an audience, your audience, and they are true. And they will follow you. Because you have a revolution now. You're leading a charge. That's important. That's powerful. It's also hard, but it's also sexy. Let's see what I'm missing here. Let me see. I'm going to turn it around. Okay, I did that one. Okay. So we're going to do that one. 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 So we're but it's not out there. On June 26th, today, around the world, Creative Mornings are talking about revolution. Somebody's playing the Beatles tune. Ah, I say, do you want a revolution? You know, like, somebody's doing that. Probably about 50 people are doing that, right? <laughs> <sighs> but the revolution is not out there. Revolution doesn't exist. It's you. It's you and what you've got. It's you and your talents. I have an old pal here from New York who's here now in Grand Rapids and she's doing acupuncture. Oh my God, was, was an art director at a magazine now doing acupuncture. 
She's leading the charge. She's taking responsibility for her weirdness, her creativity, and putting it out into the world. And people are being attracted to her. Listen, and the last thing is, again, we don't do it for the reward. We don't do it to make people happy. We're not in the people-pleasing business. A lot of our clients are in the people-pleasing business. We do it to make ourselves happy. That's sexy. That's attractive. That's how you find an audience. And they want to help you. With their physical labor, with their money, oh, I will buy one of those. That's a revolution. You have it inside of you. I want a revolution too. I'm a little bit too busy for you because I got my own going on. And it's really sexy. And I want to thank you guys for coming out and being involved in this. And I guys want you guys to own up to, to, quite frankly, the things that made you weird as a kid make you great today. But only if you put it in your work. I want to see a bunch of new tattoos tomorrow. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I love you. Adios. <laughs>